good morning, Mr. McKinley. Good morning, Harriet. Bring in your book and the mail. Yes, Mr. McKinley. What have we got for today? 11 o'clock appointment with Mr. Gallagher, personnel. 1 o'clock luncheon with the representative of the Blakewell Paper Company. I'd like some coffee, dear. Yes, Mr. McKinley. Then there's your tailor, the barber, the man about those shirts you ordered. And don't forget your pills. What the devil is this? I don't know, sir. I didn't have time to open it. Yes, Mr. McKinley? Listen, Gallagher. I just got a letter from the executive secretary of Consolidated Motors advising me that Harold P. Cleveland, president of Consolidated Motors, will be in town Tuesday. Will I please show him every possible courtesy? Now, what the devil is this all about? I don't know. Beats me. Get Herbert in New York. Well, if you don't mind, I don't like it. What the devil does the president of Consolidated Motors want to come around here for? Maybe he's just passing through. Okay, but I wish you'd please tell me what the devil this is all about. We ever heard of this bird before? Not that I recall. Hello, Mr. Herbert. Just a moment. Mr. McKinley calling. Hello, Herbert. Listen, I just got a letter saying the president of Consolidated Motors is coming up here to inspect my plant next week. I'd like to know why all of a sudden is Consolidated Motors fishing around my place. Well, maybe it is just a goodwill tour, but I don't like goodwill tours, so do me a favor. Get a hold of whoever you can and find out if there's been a change in Consolidated Motors policy toward its subsidiaries. Maybe they've decided to quit printing. Make more cars or something. Okay, call me back. I want every executive in the conference room at 10.30. And cancel Gallagher. Yes, Mr. McKinley. Send off three copies of this as soon as you can. Yes, Mr. McKinley. Listen, gentlemen. The president of Consolidated Motors is coming here next Tuesday to inspect our plant personally. I don't mind telling you I don't like a lot of big shots sticking their noses in my business. How do we know they haven't decided to convert this place into an assembly line for automobiles or washing machines? And remember, you fellas are in this just as deep as I am. Your very jobs may depend upon it. As I see it, our only hope is to make a good impression. I'd like to see some drawn looks on your faces, as if you'd been working overtime for months. And I'd like to see this place really humming. That's all. Gallagher, how about that trouble we've been having with the bookbinders local? Oh, we've got at least a month before any decisive action will be taken on that, Mr. McKinley. Well, never mind how much time we've got. I'd like to strike a note of accord in time for the inspection. Give an impression of a smoothly functioning factory full of happy employees. Now, what do they want? Another restroom on the second floor. Okay, get it installed immediately. I'm not letting our relations with Consolidated Motors be disrupted over some bookbinder's comfort. Uh, Harriet, uh, who's head of the program committee at the Chamber of Commerce? Arnold Willoughby. I want to talk to him on the phone. Oh. But then, get my wife, dear. Gentlemen, I'll tell you why I wanted to visit your plant. As a young man, I had great admiration for the art of printing. I still have that feeling. But in all frankness, I must tell you that I've been keenly disappointed with what I've seen here today. Well, you've got this place running like an automobile factory, and that's downright foolish. Not one single white-haired man did I see on the job. Where, I asked myself, where are those men? Those artisans, yes, those artists whose love of their craft has been handed down from generation to generation. Got that, Harriet? Yes, sir. Now, I know it's the policy of Consolidated Motors not to hire people 65 years of age or over. Perhaps the labor technique of putting an automobile together requires youth rather than experience. But for the life of me, I don't see how such an asinine policy, and I use the word asinine advisedly, can apply it to the art of printing. My suggestion, Mr. McKinley, is that you forget about the age requirements of our assembly lines and bring back the experienced craftsmen who honor your trade immediately. Harriet, take a memo to all our executives. As of today, our employment policy is no longer governed by the 65-year age level. All employees who have been retired for that reason during the past year are to be notified immediately that their jobs are open, provided they wish to return to work. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Now, if you'd excuse me, I have a train to catch. But, Mr. Cleveland, you, you, you can't leave just yet. I've arranged a luncheon in your honor at the Chamber of Commerce. What? And I've even taken the liberty of engaging a suite for you at the Commodore. And my wife is expecting you for dinner tonight. <laughs> I, I'd never live it down if you didn't show up. Well, in that case, why not? Thank you, Mr. Cleveland. This way, please. Pardon me, Mr. Cleveland, but wouldn't you like me to send you a copy of your speech? Oh, thank you, young lady. I don't think it's necessary. I'm sure my suggestions are going to be carried out. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed, Mr. Cleveland. Well, anyhow, Mr. Cleveland, I want you to know I think your speech was grand. I felt real honored just to hear it. 
Oh, no, my dear. It's I who've been honored. Good day. For men of mature... Get out of here. Why? We just got here. Look, uh, Mr. McKinley. Mr. McKinley. Listen, don't give me that he wanted to talk business routine. Funny, but every time I want to talk business, you're always too busy. But it's true, Mr. McKinley. You know, as a rule, I never mix business and pleasure. I only thought that Mr. Gallagher and I could take some of the office burdens off your shoulders. Office burdens? <laughs> well, well that, that's a new one. And another thing, since when do you have to dress up like that for a business conference? Okay. Tell Gallagher I'll take up this matter with him in the morning. Good night. Mr. McKinley in? Who's calling, please? Feinbaum's the name. Mr. Regal. Mr. McKinley's in conference. Perhaps if I could help you. I uh, hear you had quite a bit of excitement around here yesterday. Excitement? What kind of excitement? With uh, Mr. Cleveland, I mean. Oh, yes. Of course. Mr. Cleveland. Did you meet him, miss? Meet him? I took dictation from him. Yeah? I'll tell you what he sent us. Just a moment. Kelly will see you now. Thank you, miss. Mm. 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 How do you feel? Oh, here, take a swallow of this. You'll be okay. You sent for the doctor. I don't want a doctor. And you keep out of here, too. I was only trying to help. Of course you understand this must be handled with absolute secrecy, Mr. McKinley. Don't worry. I'm the guy that was taken. Why, if this ever gets out, they'll laugh me right out of town. Don't excite yourself, Mr. McKinley. Why shouldn't I excite myself? My whole life's been disrupted. First, my wife wants a divorce. Now I faint, all on account of this phony. Oh, the crook, the dirty low-down crook. I took him to my house for dinner. Just wait till I tell my wife. Oh, boy. Well, I laugh right in her face, falling for a phony. Well, we take a look around. Yes, sir. If we find out anything, Probably. we'll let you know. Well, Meanwhile, you get any ideas yourself, you will motives. live in a palace. Oh, boy. Well, I laugh right in her face. <laughs> I've got to see Mr. McKinley right away. It's a matter of life and death. What's the name? Mr. Erickson of the personnel department. Personnel? Mr. Gallagher's department? That's right, and please hurry. Mr. McKinley's very busy. He can't see anyone. I think Mr. McKinley would rather have things go right along as usual, miss. Mr. Erickson of the personnel department to see you, Mr. McKinley. Who the devil is Mr. Erickson of the personnel department? I assure you I haven't the faintest idea, Mr. McKinley. Only he says it's extremely urgent. Oh, he does, does he? Really, Mr. McKinley, I'm only trying okay, to... Okay, okay, send him in. Why not? The more the merrier. Well? Uh, Mr. McKinley, I have reason to believe that the man who was here yesterday posing as a president of Consolidated Motors was really an imposter. How would you like to be fired? Sir? Listen, you half-wit. If you dare breathe another word of what you've just said to me to a single soul, I'll have you thrown out of here on those pencil-striped pants of yours. Mr. McKinley, I have the man's file right here, his picture. Shut up and get out of here before I brain you. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. Yes, sir. Give me that file. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. McKinley, control yourself. Go fry an egg. Well... <laughs> 